We are having a warm day, let me tell you. By the way, this is a great trick. Like, this is my to-go bottle. This has nothing to do with this video, but like, stopped using it because I'm working from home all the time. I just sit at the desk, so I just had a cup, you know, a glass of water. But then it kept happening where I would put threads in that water or um, loads of dust would just go in there. Changed to my to-go bottle, put that on the desk. So much better. Can't believe it took me this long to figure that out. Three years I've been doing this. Three years. Anyway, hi, I'm Olga. This video is all about the accessories for our DAL cosplays. If you are new here, I'm making a DAL inspired cosplay. Yeah, so I talked about this more in depth on the first episode so if you want to go back and watch that i have a little playlist i'll link all of the videos below as well so it's really easy for you to get go and watch them in order and that way you'll be all caught up and up to date to what we're doing because this is the last installment of that video of that video of that series i guess when i got the fabric for the skirt i started cutting it I st and i had like quite a bit left over i had this idea of like making a little pillbox hat how cute would that look right a little matching pillbox i don't know how to make a pillbox hat i've never made a pillbox hat before so i went onto the internet and i found some tutorials that were like super simple using felt and stuff and then i found some things that were a bit more difficult so for the badges orville and wilbur wear a badge across sort of on the chest that says dal and then they wear some on their shoulders like those little things that captains wear or whatever like i'm not really sure what they're called i, I thought about making something that would like clasp on and all that but i don't have any black fabric and that would mean that I would have to add a strip, you know, like a loop kind of thing to the shirt to then loop that around. And I didn't want to do that because I want the shirt to be wearable and I don't want that on my shirt because that's not something that I, that goes with my, you know, aesthetic. So I thought next best thing, I'll just make some patches that I like pin onto because I'm realistically only going to be adding those badges when I want to wear the cosplay as like a full cosplay the rest of the time i'm still gonna wear the top on its own so yeah that's the plan i'm thinking i'm gonna use like black felt let's get to it so i lost a bunch of footage that showed me actually making this the process was i found some um photos of either other people who had made this people who are selling them and generally the images from the game and i copied out the um letters as best as i could with my with a free hand and then i just did a satin stitch to embroider that with um this thread i actually ran out of thread of the i had like this kind of silky yellow thread that was kind of shiny and um, I ran out, so I just used regular yellow that matched, sort of, and it looks very, very similar. Once I was done embroidering, I went ahead and trimmed that felt down to about, like, a centimeter, a centimeter and a half away, kind of just eyeballed it, and I trimmed the corners a little bit. And then I started sort of cutting tabs into it. So first I did the corners, and then I cut uh, tabs every couple, like a f not even a centimeter apart, like half a centimeter apart. I cut little tabs that are go just up to the thread that I'd embroidered, like the kind of border that I made, but not quite. Like So you don't want to snip the thread, but you do want to get really close. And this is going to make the kind of folding back of that excess a lot easier. Um, so you're going to start folding it back like this and then you're going to start like just tacking that down to the underside of the felt. I used black thread and I also used a regular sewing needle like a, I think it's I think it's a number eight and I like to tie a little knot just to make it a little bit easier and start folding the tabs down one by one and gently you know tacking them down. I try to catch the felt or the threads underneath but without going all the way um, across like the fabric or the felt to the other side so that these stitches will be invisible um, and it doesn't matter if it's a little messy because we are going to cover this up so 
um, I just go like I do a couple of stitches per tab and then I fold the next one over and I just keep going around and around. Once I've tacked them all down, I'm ready to cut another piece of felt that is the same or slightly smaller than my rectangle. So you don't want it to be visible from the top side, but you also want it to cover all of your stitching. So I uh, cut that out of the same black felt and then I grab some of my, um, like, I guess these are like, uh, not really safety pins. They're like suppose they're like brooch pins, I guess. You can sew them on or you know, you can glue them on. What I do is I cut a couple of I mark the placement and then I cut a couple of um like snips into that felt and and then I kind of like sandwich it in between the both layers of felt I guess it's hard to explain but I cut a little bit like you, you can see here and then I pull the stabby end through as well as the closure and then the bit where you that you actually sew down normally is on the underside of the felt I still like to go in and put a couple of stitches in there just to secure it in place but then at this point it is very secure and it's really nicely hidden and I just think it it's like a much neater finish. Once I'm happy with the placement of that um, like brooch pin thing, I um, place that with the sort of bit that's gonna be actually pinned out, uh, facing out, and the other one sandwiched in between. And then I just um, slip stitch that closed, like one of the, the badge to the backing felt um, and I just go around and slip stitch that close with some black thread. I think I'm using cotton thread here. Um, I, I mean, polyester is better. It's more sturdy and more secure. But I think I just had this um, cotton thread laying around. And cotton thread is annoying to use on the sewing machine because it's not as strong. So I tend to use it for small hand stitching things like this. Where this seam realistically is not going to get that much... Um, strain so it doesn't really matter what thread you use for the shoulder badges i kind of saw like looked on my body um by placing the dal one uh to see if it was big enough if it was if i wanted it smaller like kind of what sizing i wanted to go with and i decided that the same size was fine so then i just traced that onto my black felt using chalk and before I actually cut this out of the felt, um, obviously you're going to cut with a generous seam allowance so that you can then do the same process that we did for the DAL one. So what I'm doing here is just finding the center and I'm marking that so that I know exactly where the middle of this rectangle is. And the reason for that is because obviously we're making an oval and I wanted it to be nice and centered. And I actually am just freehanding it, so that's why it was so important to me to find the center so that I could then um, kind of see if my freehand drawings were similar to each other. And now I'm about to do something that's very annoying on camera, which is to sew with black thread on black felt. So I'm what I'm doing it now is I'm going to outline my um, the squares or the rectangles of the badges in um, black thread. And the reason I'm doing this is to make it easier on myself later because I know this chalk is going to like come off as I'm embroidering, even just embroidering this. So I know that that's going to come off really easily and it's going to be very annoying to then know how big I wanted this to be. I don't want to be eyeballing it. So what I'm going to do is just sew a line of back stitches with some black embroidery floss. And this will make it so that when I want to cut this out and kind of fold the tabs back, I know where the outline is basically. So originally I um, started thinking, I thought of a few ways that I could do this, mainly um, satin stitch or maybe using like a chain stitch or something like that, a different kind of filler. And I started by going with a chain stitch. And my idea was that it would fill up that space with um, less, kind of in a less time consuming way um, than chain stitch, uh, not chain stitch, than satin stitch. And also because satin stitch sometimes in sp like bigger areas like this can get caught and not look super nice and neat because it's a very large area. 
So I, I started by doing this, but then I ended up not liking it and I decided to unpick it and do it differently. The other attempt that I made before I figured out where I wanted to go with this was long and short stitch, but I've never been able to do this one successfully, even though I've been sewing and um, actually make, I've been doing embroidery for like probably five years now, and I still can't quite figure out how to work it. But um, yeah, I didn't like how it looked, so I also had to scratch that. I spent a lot of time just trying to figure it out. Okay, so here is finally what I came to figure out was the right um, answer, or I guess the look that I wanted to go for this. I got some extra yellow felt that I had lying around. I redrew my oval because it had been smudged out since with all of this attempting different things. And what I did was I cut up small... Um, ovals that went inside my main oval and then like smaller inside that oval and so on okay, so i don't know why i said so on because i only did two but yeah i did two uh small yellow ovals for each of my um badges and the idea behind this was to add a little bit of extra like filler and extra like oomph i guess to this that the stitching alone wasn't going to give me so then what i did was i filled that in with satin stitch and just called it a day and i don't know maybe an hour or two later i i maybe more i was left with this um i was much happier with the result like this and uh, what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna have a look at where my black stitches are that I sewed in earlier, the border that I made. And I'm gonna go ahead and trim my felt down to, again, about a centimeter um, close to that, to that border, trim the corners, cut the tabs, and do exactly the same process like I did for the DAL badge, uh, but do it for this. So I'm gonna add the little brooches, um, brooch pins as well. I'm going to add a backing felt and um, yeah, it's going to look very cute. So that's our badges out of the way. The last thing we have to do uh, out of the accessories is make the hat. Now this is going to be a self-drafted hat using some help that I found on the internet. I think I will uh, link below the tutorials that I found. I actually found one by the Closet Historian who was um it's similar to what i did but she also used a uh wood block like a hat block for this and i didn't have one she also used some materials that i didn't have so i ended up kind of making do with what i did have and the other one that i found i can't remember the name but i will have it linked below was a really really super simple pillbox hat that was made out of felt and i didn't want to do that one because it was very simplistic and um it's really good for like a costume or something, which I know this is, but I wanted a more functional structured hat that I could then actually get use out of. And um, so I did use some of the tips in that and some of the kind of construction ideas that she used, but I then kind of interchanged them with the um, closet historian ones and kind of came up with my own system. So I, drafted my own pattern by measuring my head and kind of how big I wanted the pillbox to be and where I wanted it to sit and stuff. And then I went ahead and I designed, um, I came up with how big I, that circle, like the circumference of that circle needed to be. And I knew that my, uh, the brim or like the middle bit, like the sides of the hat had to be, um, that circumference so i knew how big that needed to be and that's what i did first i made it so i would cut it on the fold just to save on paper um and so i added seam allowance to one side and then no seam allowance on the side that's the fold and i made it i think seven or eight centimeters high uh, which again was my five centimeters plus um seam allowance so I wanted it to be about five centimeters high and that's about two inches so then I was time to actually draft the bit of the hat like the top of the hat the circular bit and this proved a little bit more difficult I did have to go and ask my 
engineer partner to help me with the math. I'm going to give you the um, formula that I came up with and kind of some tips that I wrote down to then share with you. But this does not mean you're going to get like a pristine hat. I'm not a milliner. This is very much a learning experience. I just think that it's really fun to make your own hats. I think it's a very cool vintage um, experience, especially if like me, you have a hard time finding vintage stores and finding good quality vintage clothes and it's very difficult and expensive to find authentic items from the eras that you want to replicate so i find that making your own is a really good way to combat that um so yeah here's what i did so i originally um used the measurement of my head being 52 centimeters as the diameter for the top of the hat but it actually should have been the circumference that i used so I, the circumference is like the amount around, so like around the circle, and the diameter is the points of, from one point to the next of the circle. So I actually, I measured my head and I had, I originally had the circumference. I just didn't know how to turn then the um, circumference into the diameter. You know what I mean? So this is all geometry. I don't know if you remember this from school. So basically what I was doing here was I was using those interchangeably. And what ended up happening was that I came up with a hat that was much too big. Because obviously if I was using 52 as a diameter, then um, my, yeah, it would have been way too big. So what I actually need for the future, you know, drafting, if you're drafting this again, to figure out what your circumference is, which is the area around like the full circle, you have the equation is C equals two times pi times R. R is your radius. So a radius is two times, um, is half of a diameter. So to find the diameter, I have to divide the circumference by pi. So once I had done that, uh, the circumference for me or the, the diameter for me ended up being 17.5 centimeters. So what I did was I drew a line that was 17.5 centimeters and um, then I used my, comp like I think that's a compass, like the little twirly thing that you use to draw circles. Um, I used my compass to draw a circle that was 17.5 centimeters in diameter. And I really hope that I'm explaining that properly. I don't think I am, but I really, really hope that I am. Once I had figured that whole thing out, um, actually, I cut the fabric before I figured it out, but that's okay. So I used mostly scrap fabric that, uh, like offcuts and stuff, I was planning on using leftovers. Um, like the leftover length of fabric that I had, but turns out I didn't need to. I could just, I had enough in off cuts. So that was nice. So I cut, basically I used the lining. I used the same fabric for lining and outer fabric because I thought that the like weight of this drill would make it more, uh, would give more like sturdiness to the hat. I'm using the same fabric that I used for the skirt. This is the Minerva core range um 100 cotton drill in the color turquoise and i did get this for free as part of the minerva brand ambassador program so if you want to you know uh see my post about this and stuff all of that would really help me out so you can go and check that out in the link in the description so yes i cut this out of the fabric like you do you know two of these on the fold so one for the lining and one for the outer and then i cut some for the hat and i didn't press this even though i probably should have but i didn't because i thought even if it had a little bit of that um kind of pleated look to it it would match the skirt so i wasn't that bothered about it and so I cut some out of the fabric uh, and also I cut one layer of this interfacing. This is the natural traditional interfacing or traditional interfacing in the color natural. I think that's what it's called. Uh, this I also got from Minerva um, and I also did get this to make a video for them. But I do really like using it for this kind of things that need a lot of structure. Uh, I use this for corset making and now I'm using it also for hat making. And although buckram is more um, 
supposed to, is what you're supposed to use. I didn't have any buckram. I didn't know if I could find any around and I didn't know if I wanted to venture. This was my first hat, so I didn't know if I wanted to venture into hat making. Um, so I decided to just use what I had. Um, and I think that's also kind of the whole purpose of me making hats is one, it's a fun hobby and it's fun to add more vintage stuff or like vintage inspired stuff to my collection, but it's also really a good way to use um, fabric scraps. It's a good way to use off cuts and to use like materials that I already have um, and to add like a little something extra to an outfit. So I think if I go out and buy too many things to make the hats, then it kind of defeats the purpose. Anyway, at least while I still have some of this interfacing, when I don't, I might just have to go out and get some buckram. Look at that, I was being good. I actually did go in and press that because I thought it would um, be a shame not to. Yeah, I remember feeling very torn about it though, but I did um, I did end up pressing it. And I'm glad I did because it, it had a really nice, I really like the hat, so I'm glad I did that. So let's get to it. The first thing we did or that I did was I pinned my buckram layer or not buckram my interfacing layer to one of like what I wanted to be my outer layer and then I went ahead and uh, did a basting stitch on my sewing machine just for for it being quicker I didn't want to do it by hand then I uh, folded that long strip with right sides together and I stitched that down with a regular stitch length um, I'm using like uh, 2.5 millimeters and um, yeah, I just stitched that down with um, like on the short edge and I trimmed the excess and then I went ahead and pressed that in place. Then I pinned the circle, I guess the top of the hat to the side. Um, I basically picked out four, like I folded the, the brim or the side in half and then in half again to figure out like the four main points, kind of like a on a compass and stuff. Uh, you have like your north, south, west, and east. So I picked out those corners and then like kind of tried to pick those out also on the hat. And this is when I figured out that I'd done the sizing all wrong. So this is when I went and had to ask my partner for help with the formula and all of that. So I went ahead and fixed that but um, yeah, then I just stitched this together. I used my sewing machine on a regular stitch length and just went around. I did have a little bit of extra fabric. Um, I'm not sure what that was about. So I, uh, probably math was wrong. So I um, did end up having to um, do a little tuck fold thing, but it actually is not very noticeable at all. So I'm, I'm okay with it. Next, I went ahead and trimmed and also clipped the excess of the seam. At this point, if you're an experienced milliner, please look away because I'm about to do some butchering of a hat. I didn't have any wire and I didn't want to go out and buy some. And I was in the making do mindset for this hat. And so I used some feather light boning with its own casing uh, for my structure. I probably should have gone with something different and definitely should have gone with wire. So what I initially was gonna stitch it right down to like right on the edge of the seam, like on the raw edge. But then I realized I probably should have been stitching it further up so that my seam allowance could fold in and cover that. So that's what I ended up doing and it worked out fine. Like it's not perfect. It's definitely not my best hat. But for my first hat, I feel like um, with minimal supplies, like trying to use what I had, I feel like this worked out fine. For the next step, I basically put together the lining exactly the same as I did this. And um, I also went ahead and pressed my seam allowance up into the inside of the hat or the lining, I guess. And I tried to press the seams of the... Um, you know, of the hat, uh, the joining seam of the side and the top, but that was very difficult. Next, I stitched the seam allowance of the hat down over the feather light -like boning with a quick, just like a quick tacking stitch. I folded it first and secured it with clips and then I just tacked it down. 
Then I turned the hat right side out and tried to like zhuzh the boning to fall in place where I wanted it to. And I realized that I used too little and it has like a little, it does like a weird shaping thing as you can see here at the, at the tip at the back, which is fine, but you know, it's not as perfect as I wanted it to be. And then I put the um, lining inside of the hat and secured it with clips again. The clips are nice because they go over the boning, so you don't have to try to force spins through that. And then I slip stitched that closed. Next, I added some elastic, and obviously in hindsight, I should have stitched this in between the two layers of you know hat and lining, but it's always easier when you're looking back. Uh, so I'm gonna heat seal the ends so they don't fray. This is, I think, one or two millimeter elastic. I think it's two millimeter, um, maybe 2.5 at most. And um, this is, I'm gonna secure it in place. I measured my how much I wanted this to, to, to be and added a little bit extra just to for seam allowance, I guess. And then I have the hard job of trying to stitch it down when, I'm sure if you've worked with this, you'll know that this is very difficult um, to sew down this kind of elastic stuff because it doesn't want to it doesn't want to stay uh yeah and then i also gave that a good press and or tried to and my house finished some flaws that could honestly be covered up with like embellishments if I wanted to add um, any kind of like trim or things like that but I kind of wanted to keep it simple just to match the skirt and to like go with the cosplay because the idea of this cosplay is obviously something that I would wear to work at like on a flight or at an airport or something and I feel like clothing that would be worn as a uniform wouldn't be quite as um, fancy and decorative as or like decorated I guess as something that you would wear on your everyday life or you could have a little bit more personality. I like the result and as far as our little patches go again really happy with them I think they look really cute. Here you can see that this thread and this thread are slightly different shades um, and finishes but like you can't really tell um, you'd have to get really close to be able to see that these again slightly different from each other but you get the idea also this actual these little patches are for when I you know for the photos and for the video and whatever and then if I actually wear this to a con or an event that I'm going to be cosplaying. Hi, so this is editing Olga and it turns out I'm an idiot. Essentially I filmed a ton of things on this day that you've just seen. I thought I'd filmed uh, an outro for this video but it turns out I hadn't. So if you're still here, let me know. I'd like to know that you're still here. Basically I'm really excited about this outfit. It really came together exactly how I had pictured in my head. I actually have the sketch here. This is the sketch that I had originally planned for this, so it's definitely exactly what I had thought in my head. Definitely am really satisfied with how this came together. I'm really, really happy with the color of the skirt and the hat. I think they are a perfect match to the game. Um, I hope you enjoyed it too. I hope you enjoyed this series and coming along with me on this journey. Um, I feel like it seems like not that long on video, but it actually took me a few months to make this. I'm making these projects as like an after work, like after like weekend kind of thing. So it did take me quite a few months to put it all together. The first item I made for this series was back in May and today's actually uh, September 10th. So hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to leave me a like 
and don't forget to subscribe to my channel because there will be more series like this coming in the future. Different topics, different cosplays, different fandoms, I guess. There's lots of different things coming soon and I hope you will be here for that. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video and I will see you in the next one. Bye!